make sure you're aiming your voice into the mic. Mm. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. You. Yep. Give me two claps. Didn't. Syncs up the audio, mate. Tricks of the trade. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't really know. Plonkers, plonkers, plonkers. Hello and welcome to the Druzy Yarn. It's back. Better than ever. I started this podcast about over a year ago. And uh, my intention was that one day I would make a podcast that I could do consistently. This is the beginning of it. And I'm starting out with a, a very good episode close to my heart. My good friend Thomas Barnes is here, formerly known as Tommy Dunks. This man is the best dunker in Perth. And it's good that I can call him my friend. Oh, Thomas, thanks, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> What's going on, brother? How are we? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? No complaints? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm chilling. This chilling. New Year's resolution. My New Year's resolution? Yeah, the podcast. Oh, yeah. Well, I wrote on. down my New Year's goal. Like, mm. I need to get my, podca- my podcast like well and truly rolling this year. Mm. Got a list of guests. So, hopefully, by the end of this year, I have one of the best podcasts in Perth, mate. But... We're not here to talk about me or my podcast. You're the guest. Yeah, so this, this whole episode is centered around you. Tell us who you are, what you do. Go. All right. I'm Tom Barnes, also known as Tom Dunks. Tom.Dunks on Instagram. Follow I'm it up. A, would you say profession, amateur, professional dunker? I dunk. Professional. I dunk. So if you don't know what dunking is, think of basketball, putting the ball in the hoop with your hand. So you've got to jump high. With so, vigorous force. With vigorous force, all kinds of tricks between the legs, you know, that kind of stuff. I also like to lift weights and I'm getting into training people right now. So I like it a lot. I like it a lot. What is your training schedule? Because <laughs> as someone that has uh, trained too hard and, and done an MCO in the past, I see your training schedule and I'm, I'm scared. But when you've got the muscle mass that this man does, it doesn't really matter. So run us through like how many... Days you're mm. lifting weights a week, uh, how many days you're dunking, etc. Okay. This is the thing, right? Everyone goes, Tom, you do so much. Like, you lift so much and you lift so often, you jump so much, you jump so often. It didn't start out like that. Mm. Like, I started. You're addicted, 20... aren't you? Yeah, well, now it's just like, <laughs> I can't stop or I'll like get sad. Yeah. But, um, 2018, so um, year 12. Yeah. Started year 12, I started my whole dunk journey. And literally, all I was doing was just jumping like twice or three times a week. Mm-hmm. So that's like not really that much compared to what I do now. And then I'd lift weights like just randomly. Like I had no schedule. Now I've built up over time. So pretty much what I do is Monday, Friday is dunk day. Mm-hmm. After dunk day, I'll go and do a lift, like a main leg lift. So okay. squats, mainly squats. And then I prefer to keep the deadlifts on a different day. Yeah. Are you not just like crazy fatigued after dunking all day? Like when we filmed that video on Wednesday, mm. like on those last dunks, you were saying like your legs were so mm. fatigued. They'll go on jelly. Then I see on your story, you're like deadlifting 230 kilos for three reps or something stupid. This mm. man isn't human. Um, Are you no, not dead after dunking? I, no, after dunking, I was actually very tired because I didn't go straight in the gym. I ate and all that. Yeah. But I feel almost, it's it's weird. Like... Dunking fatigue is different to lifting fatigue. Yeah, okay. In some sense. Mm. I can definitely dunk and still lift okay. Like, obviously, my 230 kilos for five, I probably could have got, like, eight reps if, if I did it fresh. Yeah. I didn't dunk yeah. before. But I would Only never... five reps for 230 <laughs> kilos. This guy sucks. <laughs> if I did dunk... Oh, uh, no. If I did lifting, then dunking, I would suck. Yeah, okay. Just because when you're lifting, you've got so much more time to create force, it doesn't require that yeah so if you want to do something explosive always do that as your first movement yeah in my philosophy in my philosophy yeah Yeah. i like it um how did you actually get into dunking because obviously it's Mm. such a it's like a skill of the sport of basketball it's like i don't know learning to do penalties very well or that's a bad analogy but i don't know like it's like the people do the trick stuff in soccer yeah okay like like five star skill yeah, sort of sort of stuff like exactly. the F2 freestyler sort of yeah, sort of vibe. Yeah. How did you get into dunking then? Were you just like, this is sick, I mm-hmm. want to do it? Is that pretty uh, much how it went? Or is there I, a story behind it? I feel I feel like in the whole dunk community there's like one underlying person who a lot of people have come from. Mm-hmm. So there's this guy called Steven Selly. Shout out Steven. You're probably not watching this, but <laughs> if you are, shout out Steven. So shout he's, out Steve. He's five ten. He's I don't know how old he is now, he's like twenty eight. But this is like back in 2018. He basically documented his whole journey from touching the ring 
to dunking. Yeah. And I watched it. Before I even started dunking, I'm like, this guy's just an average dude. Yeah. And then he went from nothing and he like hit between the legs and all that. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, why can't I do that? In um, year 12, I was probably like 5'9", five, 5'10", five, yeah. similar height. So I was like, okay, let's do it. Give it a crack. So that's when you started year, year 12? Started year 12. Yeah, okay. Yeah. True. Hectic. Now look at you. I think that's um a key component of most athletes. Like, how many athletes do you think are just like pure freak, like absolute freaks of nature compared to people that mm-hmm. just put in the work? You know what I mean? Like, it's so- semi-comparable, but like I was fully like a skinny anorexic kid. Like year 12, I was weighing 50 kilos. Um, what? And then, yeah, like the year, my, I think it was 2020. I put on 16 kg and people were like, whoa, you're crazy. No way. <laughs> yeah. It's like, no, nah, I was this little anorexic yeah, kid. I just it. put in the work. Like you set goals, you set targets to reach, mm. you do the right things and then you, you get to where you want to be. So like, yeah, obviously you weren't born with springs in your legs. You have to deadlift 230 kilos <laughs> to be able to jump that high. Right, yeah. Um, so yeah, there's, there's, no, um, there's no trick to it, is yeah. there? Yeah, just something on that, like, you can see it everywhere. Obviously, there's, like, some genetic components for, like, the very top guys, like LeBron. Yeah. He's a genetic specimen. Yeah. He has put in work, right? Mm. Do you know Jordan Kilgannon, the blue hair? Uh, yeah, yeah. Same thing, like, when he was 16, he wasn't dunking on 10 feet. Now yeah. look at him, he's the best dunk in the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, who was it? <sighs> Steve Nash. I'm pretty sure it was Steve Nash. He said something like, if half the guys worked as hard as he did, he'd be out of work. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, there's way more talented people than you and I, right? Mm-hmm, 100%. But not all, everyone's willing to go through that pain, I guess. Put in that work. Yeah. yeah that's 100%. It's, it's when big. Yeah. Um, I think in Australian football, because the talent pool is quite a lot smaller, I think a lot of, like, athletic freaks and specimens get into the sport just based off their, their athleticism and stuff like that. But, mm. like, you look in the NBA... I know it's oh, it's probably a bad example because everyone's so tall in the NBA, but like mm. in the NFL, you have to put in work. You have to put in that work because the talent pool is like so large. Everyone wants to play in the NFL. If athletes worked harder rather than just expecting to fall into the pros, um, yeah, it could be a lot higher standard. Switching up the topic. Okay. When was the first time you heard about me? Like when was the first time you were like, Andrew, I know him. As in your YouTube and or all this? Or just me, just like... Well, 2019. Yeah? First year uni. Yeah, I can't even remember you. So, yeah, well, me I'm, and Tom I went... I was quiet, all right? Like, yeah. Man. Me and Tom went to uni together. Same and, same year group. Yeah, started at the same time, yeah. finished at the same time. We're going to graduate at the same time. That's going to be fun. Let's go. Um, but yeah, we never hung out. And then I think I remember seeing you in first year. But it took until third year. I think we're in the same nutrition class when we're doing skin folds and stuff mm-hmm, like mm-hmm, that. Mm-hmm. And I was like partnered up with Seth. Shout out to uh, Seth if he's watching. <laughs> and I was like, who, who is that? Yeah, right. I remember him from first year. Like just remembered your face sort of thing. And you were jacked. I was like, I'm not the most jacked person in this class. I, I feel sad now. Oh, my but, um, God. No, yeah. there's um Dave. Oh, David. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's the rock though. He's literally yeah, the young yeah. rock. But, um... Yeah, he was like, yeah, this dude dunks. I'm like, what do you mean he dunks? Pulled up your Instagram and it was just like a through the legs hectic thing. I was like, who uh-huh. is this guy? I want to be his friend. Here we are. So, yeah. Is that how you found thing. out? Yeah. Literally oh, from I Seth showing me. found out through like Jordan or something. Ferrugia. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to all the uni games. Yeah, yeah, name name it, right it, right naming off everyone. Um, Crazy. But yeah, that's Crazy. literally like I saw... Seth showed me your Instagram and I was like, I got to get to know this dude. This crazy. dude's crazy. Um, but yeah, Man. went through all of uni together, never said a word to each other. Now we're graduated. We're like this. Mm, that's it. Can't Bestie. separate us. This is the thing, right? I feel like our uni experience was very different. Like mm. you were very social. Like you got a lot of mates at uni. Pretty yeah. much I had like five like really close friends. But I'd really go to uni, do my class, dip. Yeah. Go home and just dunk. Yeah, I mean, not dumb, but just, I don't know. Yeah, Yeah. very, like, introverted kind of person, so. Well, I was very introverted as well. Like, that 50kg kid that went into uni, like, he... Man. Yeah, I had no social skills, except for just chatting shit with my mates. But Mm. um, something that changed in my mindset was I just started saying yes to everything. So, I went to a class one day, and I heard a few of my mates, like, talk... Oh, they weren't my mates at the time. Yeah. But, um, that they become my very close friends. So, we're talking about going to the beach, like, skipping a class and going to the beach. And I was like, 
that sounds fun. So I went up to him and I was like, you guys going to the beach after this? And they're like, yeah, you want to come? I'm like, yep. And then every time they asked to hang out, I'd just say yes, yes, yeah. yes. Like every time that I'd meet someone new, I'd ask them to come hang out. And yeah, just building those social links. It's good. Human interaction <laughs> makes you happy. How much did you get out of uni and how much can you apply that to dunking and being a coach? Or do you think you just get mm. that from PTing and stuff? Because personally, um, I found that uni helped quite a lot. Obviously, we should probably say what you studied exercise, sports, and rehabilitation science. Um, I definitely benefited more from the third year of uni because I did like 157 hours of experience plus. Do you... F- oh, did you crack, f- crack, yeah. Yeah. Like that's when I yeah, right. like got my confidence up as a pro. Did you get it uh-huh. from that way or did you find like there mm, were certain units that's good, that No, that's a good you? question. Like I feel like in terms of what I enjoy, so sports performance, mm-hmm. like jumping higher, running faster, lifting heavier... I got most of my knowledge externally. Mm-hmm. So just like as bad as it sounds like YouTube. Yeah. Like, and just online, just the online world. There's like so much stuff you can find out. 100%. Articles. Um, but in terms of like the actual, I don't know, like physiology behind stuff, you know, mm-hmm. like the energy systems, like yeah. um, functional anatomy. Yeah. Right. You have to know every muscle, the attachment, like, um, that was the like, most hectic unit ever. Right. So is that on that side of things, obviously uni's taught me so much. But then, yeah, the prac as well, like I knew so much, but how to deliver it, Mm -hmm. especially being like a shy kind of person. Yeah. It taught me how to talk to like groups of people. Mm -hmm. So, um, what sort of prac did you have to do? Did you just do like gym at Coburn? Oh, so I did the, you know, Warwick, it's like up North. It's like a basketball stadium. Yeah. Okay. So I I I went there, um, shout out Lawrence. I went to Warwick and I did my prac hours there. So all of them, all of them. Oh, well, I did the online prac, but... Oh, true. Yeah. Got but, stitched up with that. Yeah, like, literally last minute, they said, yeah. oh, you got to do this. Not the point. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's rough. Um, are you going to do any more study or just going to be grinding away at your, uh, your business, which we'll get on to? Uh, as it stands, next... next no, this, this year, year. This year. Uh, I will not be studying this year. Nice. I have some... I'm not going to say. I'm, I'm not think I'm allowed to say. I have things planned. Let's just say that. Woo. Exciting. Watch yep. his face. Um, so you're just going to work on your, your own business, which is Jump Boost. Jump Boost is... Okay, this is how I'm going to explain it. I have my own personal coaching, which is like you get a program every month depending on your needs. So it's very individual. Every Everyone's program who I coach is different. Jump Boost is like a one-time 12-week vertical jump program. Yeah, okay. So it's, it's good. But if you're really trying to push to the next level, it's probably not the best thing. So it's just like a one-time thing. This will add, say, 15 inches to your vertical. Oh, yeah, 15. How much do you reckon? Nah, 15 is a bit, bit, bit mad. Yeah, true. It depends on the person. But most, well, pretty much everyone who's been on Jump Boost has seen some level of improvement. At the start of this year, uh-huh. I did a vertical jump program. Is this... Yeah, yeah. Jump attack, Tim Grover, MJ's yeah, Tim. trainer. I thought that I was Michael Jordan. Basically, because I was putting on so much size, I thought that I could train whatever I wanted. Nothing was impossible. As long as I had the mindset to do whatever I want, no matter how hard, that, that was easy money. So mm-hmm. I was doing this program for uh, close to two and a half months. It was split into three phases. On the first day of the third phase, I dislocated my kneecap and t- tore my MCL. Yes. I want to gift this to you though. You can return it, but if you want to have a gaze really? at it, yeah, read through it and see if there's any training principles that you can add to your personal oh, training. Thanks, man. I want to hand it to you right now. Hey. Merry Christmas, buddy. Hey, hey, hey. Thank okay. you. I'm on this camera now. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, nah, those um, those sorts of programs, what do they entail? What is the science behind increasing your vertical jump? Well, from what you've said on this program, there's a lot of plyos, right? Yeah, plyos so and isometrics. Should we define plyos? To... It's like short, like, explosive. Yeah. You'd be better off at describing it. You're a dunker. Just think, I'll give an example, and it's the best way of describing it. There's a box. You're going to jump off the box. As soon as you hit the ground, you're going to jump up as high as you can with like pretending the floor is like a hot pan. So yeah. you're going to get off as quick as you can. It's like elastic energy yeah. in your muscles sort yeah. of thing, right? But then there's also the other side of programs, which I'd say jump boost falls under more so and same with jordan kilgannon's program um what is it called i should know this but 
I've lost it. But regardless, Dunkin donuts. That's the one. <laughs> Jordan Kiganda's program. It's it's like in phases. So they're usually like twelve weeks. The first yeah. phase will um be focused on strength. Okay. So so like you know, your squats, your deadlifts, like your main compound lifts. Right. Just getting stronger in those. So building the base. I mm-hmm. guess you could describe it. Then you got your second phase, which is more like power work. Mm-hmm. So moving weight fast. So you yeah. get your power cleans, clean pulls, that sort of stuff. Then you're going to go to like an elastic speed phase, which is where you, the fun begins. You yeah. More jumping. You bring in more jumping. You bring in more elastic stuff. So that's where like the pliers, where they come in. Mm-hmm. Because it's almost like if you start pliers straight away and that's the first thing you've ever done, that's where you can get in trouble. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, not for everyone. There's obviously people who get away with it, but like, yeah. yeah. Um, that's just my... I don't even know what the question was. I can't. Yeah, no. Nah, so like the the science behind it. So in that jump attack one that I just gave you, the first, so it was three weeks, week off, three weeks, week off, three weeks, week off. Okay. So yeah. the first phase was um like these hectic isometric holds, like holding a squat for two minutes in the bottom of the squat, and then doing like, uh, say like if you hold it for two minutes, do like eight reps after it, um, with no weight. Mm. So pretty much you're training like your neural system. So that when you're in that position, it just fires straight away because okay. you're just neurally stimulating it so much. Ultimately, that led to me doing my MCL, I was going to say, yeah, you were just throwing it to me on Wednesday. Yeah. So um, I'll, I'll talk about how I did my MCL. Yeah. So it was late at night. I was training four times a week at the gym and four times a week at my MMA gym doing jiu-jitsu and boxing. So I was like training twice a day. I was like the fittest I've ever been, the happiest I've ever been as well. Um, anyway... I finished, like, I was at uh, football training for my prac, and I got to the gym at about 9 o'clock, and these sessions take, like, an hour and a half. I'd work the next day, so I was like, all right, let's just smash through this. And it was, yeah, the first uh, session of the third phase of the program. So the first phase was isometrics. The second phase was power. Third stage was that elastic, like, energy sort of plyometric, yep, explosive yep, yep. stuff. So the way that Tim Grover sets it out is... You do the resistance exercise... And then you do what that muscle would do. So if you do like a deadlift, you then do a box jump sort of thing. Okay. So I was doing deadlifts. Yeah. So it, it's yeah. a super set. Mm-hmm. So for my first set, I did, it was like 30 seconds max deadlift. Um, and that was super set with lunge jumps. Um, so I was like, all right, first set, I'll only do it light. But I was stronger than I thought I was. I got 15 reps out in 30 seconds. But that is just so neurally fatiguing. <laughs> Went straight into lunge jumps and on my last rep of my lunge jumps, oh, actually my second last rep, my foot turned out. And I was like, all right, I got to keep my foot turned in because that's the right form. Turned my foot in, landed and I heard zoop and that was my knee gone. So that's what happened. But as long as you have a strong strength base, like Thomas was saying in that first I don't know. Before you do plyometrics, you should have a pretty good squat. Like you should be able to squat like well, you've at seen least the things, one right? point five times yeah. your body weight, yeah, which I couldn't do. I've always had troubles with my squat, but that's how I got injured. For those that were wondering, have you had any injuries? So I mean, I'm gonna classify injuries into like two separate categories. You've got like the one-off injuries that just happen randomly, mm-hmm. like acute. that. Yeah, acute. But then you got chronic ones, so such as jumper's knee. Yeah, like okay. that, that sort of stuff. Obviously, being a jumper, yeah, I've never run into knee injuries. Like, no, that's silly to think. Um, yeah. Pretty much since first year of jumping, 2018, nothing. Because mm-hmm. I was young. Yeah. The good old days. Yeah, just recover straight And I remember away. first year uni, that's probably when my knee pain was at its worst. Like, I was sitting in a lecture. I'm like, damn, my knee's sore. Just like throbbing pain. Yeah, literally. Inflamed. Like patella, right? Yeah. Patella tendonitis. It's very common in jumpers. True. Um. So that that's like a chronic thing, and I mean it still pops up now and again. But is it just, it's just overuse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's just something you have to manage. Um, one thing I do for that is, you know, your isometrics. Mm-hmm. Um, By the way, people that don't know, isometrics is holding the same length of muscle for like a certain period of time. Yep. So like, if you're holding a, if you're doing an isometric squat, you're at the bottom position of a squat for say like thirty seconds. Yep. So what what sort of isometrics do you do? Yes, that's what I was uh, going to get into. We got. So yours, you said yours was like two minutes, right? Like yeah, like they really were really long. Yeah. yeah. So at the start of 2019, I was under the coach of John Evans. Um, so he's like THP now. John Evans, he's like a really smart 
vertical jump coach, I'd say. That's like his niche. Um, so he got me on isometrics, but these isometrics are 45 seconds. So if it's for the knee, specifically for the patella, what you know, the leg extension machine, right? Yeah. Hold that out on a very, very light weight. Yep, there, give the example. <laughs> Maybe like a six, seven out of 10 difficulty by the time you're finishing. So you got like a light burn. Mm-hmm. 45 seconds, switch leg, 45 seconds. Do that for three sets. I guarantee you, if you got patella pain and you do that, when you stand up and try and bend your knee, the pain will be decreased. Why? Why is that? Do you know the science behind it? I am I mean, I've tried to read the article. It's by... She's Australian. Her name's Ebony Rio. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's something to do with like some kind of signal. Yeah. That it's like it blocks it almost. Yeah, okay. Um. Yeah, it's really interesting. Like why... Like it's ridiculous how much it relieves your pain. And it re- usually relieves it for 45 to 50 minutes. So that's the only injury you've had is just like patella tendinopathy, uh, oh, patella tendon tendinopathy sort of thing. Unfortunately, that is not the only injury I've had. Ah, <laughs> rats. Um, sometimes I get lower back pain, not like on the spine, but like the actual bone. It's like the erectors on the side. Yeah, okay. they get really tight, almost like stupid tight. Like yeah, when you right. touch it, it's like. So I got to get that like taken out with a massage. What? What do you mean taken out? Like massage to like loosen it up almost. so you like foam roll it or something like that mm-hmm. true it gets dumb tight yeah like low back injuries i don't know if they've always been common but like mm. being a coach kids that play cricket and they're still growing and they're just like co- constantly balling and like twisting their back always so many like low back issues my yeah. brother has low back issues uh-huh. and it's a scary one because obviously your spinal cord and your back it's like the freeway for the rest of the streets mm. of your body if you block off the freeway and there's pain like Everything just, else just gets cooked. Do you have like uh, niggling injuries as a result of your back injury? No, nah. no. Nah. It's didn't. um, yeah, especially with that whole cricket that you're talking about with low back injuries, or not just low back injuries, back injuries. Fast bowlers. Mm. That's why their careers are so short, right? Yeah. Because imagine every day, 140 k's. It's such a it's, weird movement as well. It's like extension and twisting. Mm. It's not a natural movement. And then that's why spin bowlers usually see them the yeah. average age is a lot older true like a lion right there you go gary <laughs> <laughs> we love you gary yeah, yeah yeah and then i've only had one no two like acute injuries i've had one hamstring pull that was scary as mm. like oh my goodness i thought it was a cramp nah yeah i did something really dumb after that i maxed my squat you I went and angry. squatted i was angry that i pulled it so i went and maxed my squat <laughs> this yeah. this is the mindset of this man. I wouldn't done a hammy. I don't recommend this to anyone. It's Absolutely, just, I'm not. a big do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other one's dislocated, um, pinky. Okay, so true. Nothing like what you've done. Yeah, I mean, mine was like touch wood. mine was grade. It was only grade one, and I dislocated my kneecap yeah. and did my uh, medial uh, yes. patella. Oh, it's some, and it's a, it's another one in there. It's not one of the main ones. But You're talking about meniscus though? No. Nah, it's something else? No, nah, it's a ligament, a medial oh. tibiofemoral. I can't really remember. <laughs> so rehabbing from my knee injury, like it was all smooth sailing. Doing my knee didn't even hurt. It was just like, this isn't working properly. And then it was like the couple days after lots of swelling, obviously it's like mm. stimulating your nerve endings and stuff. So it's going to be a bit tender. Um, but yeah, rehab went all sweet. All the way through, I got back to doing boxing like five times a week. I was back about to go back to jiu-jitsu. And then we had exams and I crammed so bad for those. Like I wasn't training at all because I was just cramming so hard. And we had like a three-day break where we didn't have exams because we had five exams in the last exam. It was crazy. Um, anyway, so I went to box that night and I was just warming up and I felt my knee getting tender. Mm. Um, and I was like, ooh, that, that's not normal. Um, anyway, went on to do like these, like two minutes of lunges, like boxing classes are pretty high load. Like it's like two minutes burpees, two minutes, like push up, squats, sit ups sort of thing. So it was like two minutes of lunges with like a stick above your head. Anyway, oh, on my last rep, I like my hamstring didn't contract properly. And I was like, Oh, that didn't feel quite, quite as it should. Yeah. And then I stretched out my hamstring and it grabbed straight away. And I was like, nope, I'm not going through an injury again. And ever since then, I haven't had confidence in my knee. It's just like the biggest, the hardest thing about recovering from my knee injury, 100% has been the mental side, having no, confidence in my yeah. knee. Like, um, but yeah, up until that point, I was like, yeah, sweet, I'm going to be back. 
But then after that one hiccup, like my whole mentality is shifted. It's changed. And it's like, yeah, you, you don't want to cook your knees because by the time I'm like 55, I don't want to be having an, like a knee replacement, yeah. you know what I mean? If I make it to 55. Yeah, but. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just for the people, you didn't need surgery. No. Correct? No. Yeah. But okay. if it was if it was like a grade three, I would have potentially. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Anyhow, enough about my, my sob story and uh, my knee pain. No, that's actually pretty bad though. Like the whole mental coming mm. back from injury, that's a big thing. 100%. Like ACL injuries, are, I don't even know. I, I read it ages ago, but like the biggest thing with ACL injuries, it's a very scary injury to get, first mm. of all. They're very, I want to say not easy to recover from, but like compared to how it was in the 70s or 80s, we're very good at fixing yeah. ACL. There's like a clear roadmap to yeah. recovery sort That's of thing. That's not the issue it's, though. Yeah. The issue's... 100%. Because once your knee buckles on you and you feel that mm-hmm. instability, mm-hmm. I can remember doing my knee like it was yesterday. I remember going up the stairs to the gym. I remember racking the weights. I remember doing the deadlifts. I remember doing like most reps. I remember my mindset on those reps. I'm not comparing it to like a traumatic event, although it was, but... I'd- like if if anyone's yeah. ever had a traumatic event, you can really remember. Like it, it's ingrained the whole day. in you. And yeah, I can remember the zoop, and then this radiologist come up to me because he was like, "You're right." I'm like, "Nah, I think I've done my knee." Hey, and he's like, "All right, if you need a scan, come see me." Didn't go see him. Thanks for the kind gesture though. Aww. But um, yeah. Ever since, like, I thought I was yeah on that road to recovery, and mm. then I had that hiccup, and now my confidence is just. And it's not like I can just be like, oh. Like, shut, shut it off. Like, I'm confident. I'm fine. It's a weird subconscious thing that just... I mean, yeah, I bet you wish you could turn it off. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> if it was an option, you would turn it off. But... Yeah. No. Another another thing about the mental side of it is, like, as I said before, I was, like, the happiest I'd ever been. Training four times a week in the gym, four times a week at my MMA gym, doing boxing and jiu-jitsu, and I was flying. Like, I, I journal, and I wrote down at that time my schedule. I was mm. like, this is the happiest I've ever been, 100%. Oh, bro, that's so sad to hear. Yeah, no, I'm chilling. Uh, okay. It could be a lot worse. It could be a lot that's worse. It. Yeah. Um, but, like, just removing, like, it just completely ripped my schedule up. Like, I couldn't go to the gym, couldn't box. Well, I could go to the gym. I could do upper body. But you sort of, I don't know, you don't really want to when you can't walk around properly and stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, couldn't, couldn't work. I was just hobbling around to uni. Um, and yeah, it just throws oh. your schedule in the bin and everything that like has been good for you just gets taken away. That's the hardest thing about injury rather than just the pain. Although if you got your femur snapped in half, I'm sure that wouldn't be very fun. Yeah. No, um, <laughs> I was just thinking, uh, do you know, have you seen like Paul George's? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm sure you've been down the rabbit hole of YouTube. Kevin Where? Sports inju- I, I was going to say Kevin Ware. It's like a unique one. Most people don't know yeah, about Yeah, I remember that. Oh, so you have been down the rabbit hole on YouTube. Yeah. No, nah, I've been a basketball fan for a long time. Man. See, it's shit like that. Mm, that would be freaky. Yeah, but like, respect to Paul George, right? Yeah. He's What's he come... doing now? Exactly. Yeah. He's back. He's back. Zach Levine, also back. Better what did than he ever. do? ACL. <sighs> Clay Thompson's about to be back. Yeah. No. Well, I guess we'll see how he is, but... Yeah. I'm too... Kevin pretty... Durant. Eight, uh, not ACL. Um, Achilles. Yeah, that's hectic. Basketball is such a, I don't know, a scary sport for that. It's like so much impact, so much jumping. Um, that's why when I say you like deadlifting and dunking and not getting enough sleep, I'm like, Thomas, slow down. You but, literally message me like, bro, sleep. Yeah, <laughs> legit. Sleep. sleep is, yeah, yeah. like um, athletes that train as much as you do, like recovery is as important as training because mm. you're doing so much damage to your body. Well, not damage, but like so many micro tears to your body. Yeah. There's so much impact. When you sleep, there's two types of sleep. There's REM sleep and non-REM sleep. Non-REM sleep, it's like the first... Um, so, like, for the first five to four to five hours of sleep, it's predominant. And then as you get later into your sleep, your REM sleep takes over, which is, like, your dream sleep. Yeah. But anyway, if you're not getting enough sleep, you're not getting enough non-REM sleep, that's when, like, your body's tissue recovers. So, if you're getting, like, five hours or whatever, you're going to be mentally drained, which means your brain's not going to be signaling to your muscles properly, which yeah. increases your, your risk of injury. Your, incre- your risk of injury increases by two times for, like, Say you got six hours of sleep, you're mm. twice as likely to get injured as you would be if you had seven hours of sleep. If oh, you have man. seven hours of sleep, you're twice as likely to get injured if you got eight hours of sleep. If you get eight hours of sleep, you're twice as likely to get injured as if you if you got nine hours of sleep, if that makes sense. It's a direct linear correlation. That's f- the more you know, kids, get Damn. to sleep. Yeah. And that's another thing. Um, sleep has like, been the biggest change in my life 
since I've started training. Like, I used to play Xbox all night until 2 a.m., like, wake up at whatever time I needed to the next day. Um, yeah. It was all over the place. And then once you get your sleep in order, everything else just falls into place. Mm-hmm. Like, your energy levels are up. And, um, yeah, obviously, you get more gains as well. Get to sleep. Why aren't you having sleep, Tom? Are you sleeping better? I am making a priority. You Real quick, back to what you're saying about the Xbox thing. We've all been there. Yeah, good Staying times. up late playing games. I feel like one reason it's kind of okay is because you were younger, right? Mm. So, I, I guess you get away with it a little bit more. Yeah. But, like, yeah, especially as I get older, I'm acting like I'm... <laughs> but you know what I mean, though? If I was 25, I probably couldn't be maxing my deadlift out three times a week on five hours sleep. Yeah. Hundred yeah. percent, and yeah, you're gonna be feeling like the effects of that training the more you get older as well. Like the older mm-hmm. you get, the more seriously you need to take recovery. That's why I enjoy it. Like right now, I'm like I'm 21. I need to, because I enjoy training. Like every time yeah. I, I know I'm going to gym, I'm like happy as like I get love it. Get some hard style on. Let's go. It's so good, right? And like I hate rest days. Yeah, it's the worst day of the week. Hundred percent. You gotta you gotta exercise. Humans are not just people that sit on the couch and do nothing no, exactly like you like backtrack a couple hundred thousand years <laughs> like every man was just running chasing bloody bison or whatever it. it was like that's what makes humans humans and you see like i don't know might be a bit offensive but you see fat people sitting on the couch sitting on their phone watching netflix it's just like mm. that is not how this animal is meant to yeah. be and that's <laughs> yeah, why yeah, that's yeah. why so many people are unhappy because they're not treating their body the way it's meant to be. Physical strength is mental strength. And I am a example of that because I can, like, I have a night and day comparison. When I was 50 kilos, weak as piss, I was sad. Then I put on 16 kilos and I felt like a normal person. No trick to it. Real quick though, that's like, that's insane. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just, that, oh man, that's crazy, you know. Eat your eggs. 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 That's the Druzy Gr- secret. Yeah, no. Growing up eggs. on a farm. Growing up on a farm. Lots of chickens, ah, uh, just bacon, eggs all day long, mate. Baked beans, yeah. <laughs> sixteen kilos. I'm made just of like eggs. That. Fire, okay, interesting. What comes and you first? ate? Uh, you eat the yolk as well. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You want to eat yolks? You don't eat yolks. No, no. I just know people don't like bodybuilders, uh, right? They just have the whites because the yolks got the fat. Uh, okay. So if they just want to get protein, they just have the whites because you can True. buy just egg white cartons. So what's the yellow bit? What's the More yolk? fat? Is it More just fatty cholesterol? And, okay, yeah. Could be bad. Could be bad. Nah, I don't... I think it's actually all right. But <laughs> it's one of those things like 10 years... Like, they'll go, oh, um, egg yolks are bad for you five years later. Or oh, they're great for you. Yeah. You have more. And then it's, it's one of those ones. Yeah. So just do what you want. Don't mind. If your cholesterol's fine. Mind. Yeah. Um, that's another thing. Um, my heart rate, because obviously first year of uni, we were measuring heart rate just like all the time. Goodness. Here we go. It was yeah. at like 110. Like like sitting between ninety, well, like pre-exercise yeah. heart rate. So obviously yeah, yeah. your sympathetic nervous system gets fired up if we're about to go on a bike and we're a bit nervous. We get mm. getting it. It would have been around ninety, I reckon. Mm-hmm. Like a year later, it was at like fifty six. Just like okay, well, yeah. Real quick on that. Um, oh, actually, it almost links back to where we we're talking about before with the whole I hate rest days. Yeah, like on rest days, I literally find I'm like, I'm doing this one. I'm like actually shaking because I need I need it, man. Yeah. Okay, and then segue. I'm talking about heart rate. Um, I don't know why, but like my resting is literally like 90 to 100. Like Probably because you're not getting enough sleep. Maybe. And also blood pressure. I have high blood pressure. It's really? Interesting, right? What's your blood pressure? Like average one? would be like. It's weird. My systolic. Should we explain how this works? All right. So systolic is when your arteries are squeezing, like contracting the pressure that so you're. So your heart's going whoosh, and you're pumping blood. That's systolic. So that's the top value. That's the high number. Mate, this is the sports science podcast yeah, right here. No, a couple literally. of sports scientists just nerding out. Um, yeah, diastolic yeah. when it's resting. Yeah, so average systolic, honestly, it's like 140 to 150. <sighs> okay. And then, weirdly, diastolic's like 60 to 70, which is lower mm. than what... Because it should be 120 over 80 for, yeah. for reference. I reckon it's just all that hard style that you're listening Maybe, to. Maybe, I don't know. It's just... It's really weird. It's higher in the mornings before I train. Then yeah, after, okay. after it's fine. It's honestly, like, honestly, reckon if you had a good night's sleep, that would drop 100. percent There are children screaming maybe outside. Maybe I'll try that tonight. I'm gonna close that window. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Question for you. Mm-hmm. Have you 
it's not off topic. It's actually pretty on topic. Have you ever tried melatonin supplements? No. No. Okay. Just what? Sure. What's the effect of melatonin supplements? Sleep. Yeah. Okay. So melatonin is released by your body to put yourself to sleep, basically. So mm-hmm. things like blue light inhibit the release of melatonin. So you know the whole like stigma around don't go on your phone before bed. Yeah. It's because it inhibits melatonin release. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, so taking melatonin helps you get to sleep. Pretty much. I see. Yeah. So. But it's one of those things like caffeine where you can get addicted to it and you become yeah, resistant. Dependent or on it. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. When you are feeling sleepy, that's just like your your adenosine stores in your head, like uh, filling up with adenosine. Uh-huh. So what caffeine does, we've learned this in sports science, I know you know this, but like if you have a coffee, it blocks off those adenosine <laughs> yeah. receptors. So when you have like a massive crash, that's when your caffeine runs out and your adenosine just floods in. So that's why like if you have a coffee after like three o'clock, you're going to find it hard to get to sleep because those sleepy receptors aren't being stimulated by adenosine mm. which makes you go to sleep 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 important. is important talking of sleep jet lag that was a segue you've traveled mm. you've been to america I you went it. over there for a, a dunk dunk camp the yeah. dunk camp hosted by andy nicholson another Nip- shout out shout out andy andy nipleson or nickel nicholson? Nicholson. 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 Not, not not this one nipleson yeah. would be a sick last name nipleson yeah. yeah yeah maybe i'll change it <laughs> tom nipleson sick. anyway where, where did you go go okay <laughs> So, I went to LA first, just Mm -hmm. because if you're going to America, you may as well go see something before your dunk camp. Mm -hmm. Um, went to LA for like two days. So I went to Venice Beach. LA LA is nice. I like LA. Mm -hmm. It's it's just different. Yeah, I don't know. Everyone just looks a bit different. Everyone talks a bit different. Yeah, it's just different to Australia. Hundred percent. It's like even like mannerisms. Everyone just I don't know. Mm. But. Just LA gestures nice. and stuff like that. Yeah, all just, different. Oh, and just like sayings. Yeah. You know what I mean? But mm. like, if we, if I say, what do you reckon? Yeah. What's reckon? They don't know what that is. <laughs> what do you think? You yeah. know what I mean? It's that stuff like that. Dumb yanks. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> um, and then after LA, I went to Utah. Okay. So Utah Sick. is like a little bit east. And yeah, so it's more Midland. Yeah. Than LA. Um. So anyone who doesn't know what Utah is, it's just like a Salt Lake City. It's like surrounded by mountains. It's really nice. Utah's a state, right? Utah's a state. Yeah. Salt Lake City is the city. City, yeah. I think it's, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's the capital. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know. I've always thought that um, Utah was a city just following the NBA. It's like Utah Jazz. But yeah, yeah, right? Um, anyway, continue. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, Dunk Camp in Utah, 2019. Manage- the good old days when we could travel, right? We could just fly to the other side of the world, yeah. not have to Man. put in a COVID test, yeah. not have to quarantine. Took oh. it for granted, let's say. When they really get did. back, let's be real. Nah, it was, it was amazing, definitely. What I did you got, get out of it? What What did you not have before that you had after, other than inches in your pants? <laughs> ah, ah. Nah, see, I knew you were going there. <laughs> no, nah, but what, what did you gain from that? Like, well, if you're going just, to the other side of the world to yeah. do a, a training camp, it must be pretty yeah. like high level stuff. Mm. I mean, it's not just a training camp. Obviously, I learned so much there because they have like guest speakers. Like, they had um, mental stuff there, mm-hmm. like meditation. They had mental talks on like just everything. But they also had like physiology talks, like John Evans, Daniel Buck, um, Ben Patrick. Those three guys had all lectures mm-hmm. on their like. Take, they all have very different takes on like sports science, right? Yeah. So they all said their take, and I, uh, you just take away little bits and pieces of it. One big thing that came out of the 2019 dunk camp was isometrics. Like you know yeah. the ones I was talking about. Yeah. Pretty much no one had heard about those. What is quad extension? Holds. The 45 second ones. Yeah. And now they're like f- fucking everywhere. So yeah, thanks to John for that. Um, <laughs> is that what you learned it at the the dunk camp? Yeah. Over yeah. There? Oh no, true. I was doing it before because I was under him as yeah. a coach, so he oh, taught true. me them prior. Well, so he taught over there. Yeah, yeah, he's from America. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's from America, John Evans. True. Um, but also, just the experience of seeing people... Okay, this is going to sound really arrogant. No, But when on. I dunk... Well, at the start of 2019 and the end of 2018, I only dunked for people worse than me. Mm-hmm. So I was always the best dunker in a dunk session. Yeah. As cocky as that sounds. No, it's not. When funny. I went over there... I'm very, no I'm, I'm seeing Jordan Kilgannon, Isaiah Rivera, Jonathan Clark... But you, most of you guys don't know who they are, but you look them up. They're yeah. like the best dunkers in the world. I'm a chump, <laughs> right? But that... See, some people would be like discouraged by saying, oh, I'm knowing it. Yeah. 
literally my biggest progress was getting back from the US mm-hmm. those next six months literally every dunk session I hit a new dunk yeah I was so mo- I had never been so motivated in my life yeah it's yeah so I think that's probably the biggest thing I got out of dunk camp the like drive to be I want to be them yeah sort of thing 100% having someone to look up to that's um an interesting point that you raised yeah. there about like I don't know when you were over here you were the best like out of the people that you dunked with and then you went over there and you were a no one like I like to have the mentality like surround yourself with people so that you feel like an idiot like yes you're, you're yes. looking at like all these people around you learning so much of them like um yeah just absorb everything that they give you doesn't matter how much you give back mm. well it does obviously it depends what setting you're in but um if you surround yourself with people that you're constantly learning from you're gonna be way better off than if you were just hanging out with some like i don't know people that could only do like a one-handed dunk Mm -hmm. um and you just feel like a big man because you can do a windmill and they can't and it like fuels up your ego like dropping your ego being willing to learn about new dunks willing to learn about new techniques from the best people it's only going to benefit you fam i mean they're that good for a reason aren't they hey they're that good for a reason like they know more than i do yeah and i had to realize that yeah it almost like brings you down a peg yeah okay i'm not there did you was it like a sort of realization like not in an arrogant way, but you you thought like you were higher than you were and then you went over Yeah, there and I you think were so. Like, yeah. yeah, bit of it's a all awakening. Different. Like, yeah, it's just... Seeing Jordan Kilgannon test a 49-inch vertical in person, like you realize how high these guys are jumping. That is nuts. I literally saw it and I saw him jump. I'm like, nah, this is... They're like a new breed of people. 49 inches is yeah. literally like jumping your feet over a child just about like yeah. 110 mm. centimeters ish and that's like a i mean i can get into the whole like ha, what's the best way to measure vertical there's vertex so that yeah um surely it's 49 just, on a vertex very impressive especially because he didn't cheat his reach like yeah. you know the nfl when they're like i got a 40 something inch vertical when yeah. they do their how high can you touch they're literally like that yeah okay you know what i mean they cheat it but at dunk camp andy and whoever was doing the measurements they're like Put your damn arm up. They like force it up. <laughs> yeah. So your your vert's your vert. Uh, yeah. So yeah, vertex. All right. Vertec. Surely it's just like the distance from the bottom of your feet to the ground is your vertical. But obviously that's yeah. harder to measure then. But then also at the same time, when you're measuring your reach, you're standing your toes. Yeah. Because displacement, right? Your toe off. When you leave the ground, your foot's not like that. It's like that. Yeah. True. There's so many ways. So sports it's science hard. variables that people Mate. wouldn't consider other than sports scientists. Obviously, I mean, you can get caught up. This is what I realized in the last couple, more like last year, I was very obsessed with like the number, like how high can I jump? Yeah. Now I'm more just like, what dunk can I hit? Yeah. If I can jump high, I can dunk. Mm-hmm. If you're obsessed over the number, you're going to go crazy. Yeah. Because that number could vary day to day. This break in the podcast is sponsored by absolutely no one. If you want to sponsor my podcast, that could be nice. Please rate my podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts on whatever platform you're listening to give me five stars leave a review so i can get some feedback and improve the podcast enjoy the rest of the episode wait people watching this if they actually know me really well they'll be like confused because i don't really talk that much yeah true but then as soon as you start talking to me about like training and stuff it's just yeah Yeah, well that's what you're passionate about like it's always like um yeah when you're in a social environment it's always just small talk that's what I, I like about podcasts. It's just yes. like, let's get to the nitty gritty. Mm. I know Tom likes training. I know Tom likes dunking. I know yeah. Tom likes me. Let's talk yeah. about me for two hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, yeah, lots, lots of small talk. I, I, don't, I don't want none of that. I want to get to the nitty gritty. Mm. That's what we love about podcasts. Um, where do you see yourself as an athlete mm-hmm. in five years? What do you want to be oh, doing that's, that's different? That's a long to, time, to man. That's when you'll probably be in your athletic peak, right? Like 26 27 probably depends yeah because a lot of people argue it's like yeah that's usually what the people say like 27 28 but now because of all this new like knowledge mm. you're getting people in your 30s still getting yeah. better so i can i'm gonna list off a few people that i can think of lebron james lebron <laughs> everyone knows lebron if you don't know lebron you're he's averaging right. the same stats as he was 10 years ago like he's getting the same yeah. points assists and rebounds per game yeah. as he was when he was 27 and if we're talking athletically I mean, he's probably dropped off a bit. Yeah. But he's 36? 37. Yeah. Bro, he's 30. Man, what? 
Uh, he's going to be playing in the league with his son. That's how that's old nice. he is. But he's still dominating. He's still the it's best done. player in the world. It's stupid. Mm. Okay. And then there's... Okay. I've got one guy. Two guys. One person is called Myrie Bowden. Mm-hmm. He's a former dunker. But he was like still getting better in his 30s. Same with another guy called Jonathan Clark. Still getting better in his 30s. Now, this next one <laughs> controversial. Do you know who Justin Gatlin is? No. He's a sprinter. Okay. Or was a sprinter. Oh, maybe. So, he was like Bolt's... Probably his best rival other than mm-hmm. Johan Blake. Uh, he was done for drugs. Yeah, I do. Once or twice. Um, but at Rio, he was like 30s, mm-hmm. right? And if anyone knows anything about sprinting, 30s, like 30s, like a death sentence almost for sprinting. Like they've, re- sprinting's a young sport. It's yeah, a young okay. sport. And the like fact that he was still getting, he was hitting PBs like so late into his career. I mean, the reason I said it was controversial is because of the previous drug. Yeah. It's like, why are you hitting PBs? Yeah. But still, regardless, he's... Drugs! Drugs! It's impressive. Yeah. Still hitting, yeah. Well, um, an example I'll throw up is Glover Teixeira, current light heavyweight champ in the UFC. Mm. He's like 43, 44, and he won the belt at 43 in a division that like John Jones ran through. Obviously, mm. John Jones isn't at light heavyweight anymore. He's going up. Um, but yeah, like, uh, is he lost to Jan mm-hmm. Blackowitz? And then this big Glover Tech share bloke from Brazil, like he's been around for so long. Don't actually know how long he's been in the UFC, but a long time. And yeah, he wins the belt at 43. He attributes it to his like, I don't know how uh, wise he's become sort of thing. I guess, um, yeah. But yeah, it's obviously different. He's obviously not at his athletic peak, but he's the best. If you're 43, class. like you, you should not be doing that. No. no. Does he have kids? I think he does. Yeah, he's got dad strength. That's, <laughs> the, that's the key. When you get, as soon as you have a kid, you're like, all your lifts go up just because you're a dad. Because everyone knows about dad strength. It's crazy. When are you thinking about having kids? Nah, don't. I can't, <laughs> if I say this, I can get in trouble. Shout out to Claire. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. But we haven't even answered the question. Yeah. What was the question? Five, oh, years, five right? years. Where do you want to be? That's what Man, we're talking I about. Be, talking about I want to be the best dunker in Australia. I want to be competing. How far off are you off being the best dunker in Australia? Oh, I'm a bit. Yeah? Yeah, Brody's pretty... Who's there's, there's where's, guy, where's he from? What's he like? He's from Townsville, True. Queensland. So like remote, kind of mm. like Perth, right? Yeah, isolated, um, isolated than that. Yeah, he's um, he's good at dunking. Yeah. So he's like travelled everywhere mm-hmm. to dunk. So yeah. I'm not there yet. I think in five years I can be. That's in terms of dunking. Um, I also want to get the Australian deadlift world record, not world record. Uh, country record for the 75 kilo class that's sick 306 that makes me sure. excited that yeah makes me very i reckon excited. i can get 300 by the end of this year that's nuts if you get sleep you'll be able to get 350 i think yeah, i could get 350 tomorrow if i sleep tonight <laughs> it's not gonna happen though 100 uh, percent. how can you improve as a dunker in the next like year or so what are you looking to improve on like right now consistency what just so if someone says do it between the legs I can hit it first go. Yeah. Just like okay. bang, bang. Not fourth go like on my yeah, video. No, Four I, goes. <laughs> that's terrible. This guy. This guy stinks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But consistency, I'd say. Just being able to like, I don't know, be confident that you can hit whatever mm-hmm. dunk's thrown at you sort of thing. Because I jump well and truly high enough to hit much harder dunks, mm-hmm. but my technique sucks. Okay. So I, that's very frustrating to me mm-hmm. because I've done the work and I jump, yeah. but I just can't actually put the ball in there. In the ring. So you think you'll improve like just through repetition sort of thing, just through practice? Yeah. And you love doing it. I mean... It, it's not a chore to me. Yeah. I'm, ha- I'm... Yeah, it's easy. Why don't you... um Like, you have a YouTube channel. Go subscribe to Tom Dunks. Oh, but, no, um, I think I know what this question's going to be. Let's let's get that up and running. Let's oh. get that rolling, baby. <laughs> I was pretty good for views. a while. Bro, you get views. I do get views. I was there for a while. And then I got lazy. I have no excuse now, don't I? No like, uni. No uni. Shit. Yeah. No, nah, you got to. I was looking at your channel last night. I'm out here putting out 450 view farts. This dude's getting like a thousand views minimum every video. And yeah, being from Perth, like the best. You can label yourself the best dunker in Perth because you are, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm exactly. Say it. Yeah. Yeah. Best dunker in Perth in my lounge room. <laughs> all right, all right. Get in. Embarrassing. <laughs> um, but like, yeah, I think you could smash YouTube out and like, you mm. know, you, you got me to, to help you out with that. Because yeah, you know all this, like all the intricate, like the stuff mm. you were saying when I rocked, I'm like, oh, yeah. it's just the algorithm fam. Man knows. Yeah. Man knows. But um, 
like you got that um dunk contest coming up yep that'll be um, a, a summer good jam in callum park is that like run by red bull yeah, i think it's a sponsor okay i think yeah i should know that but we're gonna go to that and i'm gonna film that for your channel because we need to get that rolling yeah because yeah youtube it's just like another source of income it's gonna benefit your business it's gonna for real. it's gonna upskill you just by editing and mm. doing it's just why not do yeah. it you record I mean, all your dunks anyway yeah I had my fair share of YouTube back, like, when I was a kid. Mm. Kid, like, low teens. Gaming videos, you know the... Yeah? Yeah, you, you've been there, right? Uh, I didn't upload gaming videos. Really? Nah. Shit. Okay. What, what did you play? Um, I, I uploaded a few. So, do you know Battlefield? Yeah. Battlefield 4 was my main game. Dope. Bit of Minecraft earlier. Um, a little bit of Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, Counter-Strike. Do you know... Yeah, okay. Yeah, I never played Counter-Strike. Counter-CSGO. Counter but, yeah... That was like, it really stopped in year 11. Yeah. All okay. that gaming stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I stopped. Mm. Yeah, it would have been when you started training, right? Pretty much. I it was, That was my like obsession. Yeah. YouTube gaming. My obsession changed. Yeah. 100%. Um, what was I was going to say. Do you play games right now? No. Same thing. Yeah. What's your reason though? Because I train and okay. I've got responsibilities now. Uh -huh. Like, um, yeah, before I... So, literally... Like, start of 2019, like, all throughout 2019, really, I was, like, the biggest FIFA sweat. I loved FIFA. <laughs> sweat. Um, I honestly reckon I would have been, I, I say this, I think I could have been one of, like, the top 100 players in Australia on FIFA if I had good internet, but I lived in the bush. My internet was trash. Um, but Like, like 100 ping type? Yeah. Mm. Like, easy. Like, 90 ping was, like, good sort of thing. Wait, where'd you live? Um, Baldivis. I know yeah. Baldivis. Yeah. But, like... On the farm? In yeah. The, yeah. In bush. So that's um, like... I, I'm not even... No, don't worry. <laughs> but um, yeah, literally, like, I was going to uni, playing games, mm. and that was it. And then mm. I had started going to the gym, did my first 30 days of fitness challenge. And yeah, I think um, the last game I really smashed out was Warzone, COD Warzone. Ah, it's a big um, lockdown game. And that was in lockdown. Yeah. Like, first lockdown. Yep. And then ever since then, my internet was giving me the shit. So I was like, nah, I'm just going to train. Look at me now. I'm absolutely no one. But hey, <laughs> no, nah, I, um, yeah, gaming's fun. I, I wish I could just yeah. like have two hours a night where I could just play whatever and mm. dominate on FIFA. But, um, yeah, once you, as you said, get that new obsession. Yeah. You, you switch it up. Yeah. All right. Last question, potentially. See how we go. Of yep. video. What advice would you give to yourself like four or five years ago Dang. to yourself in high school? Year 12, Tom. What, what, looking back now, could you have given him which would help? Mm, that's, okay, I think I've got two. First of all, start earlier. Yeah. Don't start in year 12. <laughs> Although, like, it, I never know, like, maybe that was the best time to start for me. Because I was a very late bloomer. Mm. So. Same. Yeah. So, I didn't grow to, like, year 10, man. Mm -hmm. So, I guess maybe lifting weights was alright for me when I was 17. But, yeah, start earlier. But then... This could, this could get really deep right now. Go deep. Really? Okay. Um, second one would be, be less of a pushover. Yeah. I have like this weird thing within me. Like, I always want to please people mm -hmm. and like make them happy. Yeah. But then sometimes it puts like me in the shitter. Almost. 100%. So, and I mean, I still struggle with it. Like putting me first. Yeah. Sort of thing. That's a good one. Just, yeah. I, a, yeah. I like that. Um, yeah. Because what I've found and... Um, yeah, like, I won't get into why I'm going to say this, but mm. so, there's certain people out there which will cling on to you and they'll take, 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 never give yeah. anything back. And as soon as you cut them off, you'll never hear from them again. They'll be outy of here. Um, and yeah, just like being a punching bag for people. Like, uh, growing up, I definitely felt like, I wasn't bullied, but like people just like, I don't know, like, brush me off as like nobody sort of thing just like oh who's this guy and it's just, annoying right though yeah but you yeah. just cop it because you're just like i don't want to displease people i was a bit a bit chirpy in high school and that, <laughs> but like yeah no i think that's a good one okay yeah don't be a pushover because people will continue to use you if you let them use you that's and it. as if they're not propelling you forward they're holding you back fam that's it that's it no i want to know yours now well th this is going to be my my closing out question on every podcast okay though, but um <laughs> Um, What's my yeah, I, I think, um, invest time into people that 
will invest time into you. I think that's the, the biggest one. Mm. Like, um, yeah, if, if it's not there, if you like a big one in high school was like messaging people and them not messaging you back. It's like, why didn't you message me? Why didn't you ask me? Oh, that? Yeah. But, um, yeah, like I would give you my time a day, any day, because I, I know you're the type of person that would give it back. I know you're a gener- like a generous person. Mm. So like, I'm not afraid to like go help you out with a video or go film for you or whatever. Cause I know you're a good bloke. I know you're not just going to throw it back in my face and shit on me. So <laughs> you can't shit on me though. Like if you want, but I prefer not to like just on my chest. Big steamer. Oh, I- Damn, <laughs> this podcast has gone sexual. <laughs> gone wrong. <laughs> um, but yeah, just um, investing time into people that will help you, like that will propel you forward. Similar yeah. to yours. This is the thing. This is why I like you. There's a lot of people who float and just, they don't really have goals sort of mm. thing. Like as bad as that sounds, but I know you're like, you're a motivated person mm. and you have goals. Yeah, 100%. So I know you're going to work for things. Yeah. And you've been like at the bottom. Mm-hmm. Now we're here. Exactly. Let's go. A man was no, 50 kilos, that. like, and how, like 68, 69? 68, yeah, six, yeah, around that. that yeah. Bro, people don't, until you do it, you don't know, understand how hard it is. Mm-hmm. And my man's done it. So I know he's, if he's done that, like, he's just going to keep going, right? Exactly. So. That's the thing, though. It's like, the, the harder the thing that you do, whether that's, like deadlift i know you enjoy it but deadlifting whatever weight you do is hard that's the hardest thing you're going to do that day mm. everything else is a luxury yeah. you're oh, chilling i enjoy it yeah but at the same time, there's sessions where i want to die yeah like um monday i puked like i was halfway through my session because my gym gets really hot my like home gym mm-hmm. it gets stupid hot and i was just like no nah, i'm gonna die so yeah. i had to like jump in the shower turn that shit on cold and i just like yeah yeah just because yeah. I was training so hard. You stomp it down the drain? Yeah. Oh, it's not a waffle stomp. It's called something else, but... <laughs> Mud stomp. <laughs> Mud stomp. <laughs> I've got a story about that. I'll tell you after. That's not safe for work. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, doing the hard thing yeah. just makes everything else so much more achievable. Like, um, when yeah. I'll, I'll go back to being 50 kilos again, it's... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm always going to bring it up, but... Um, yeah, like everything was so hard for me. Doing the dish- dishes was hard for me. Like doing whatever my mum asked, like, I don't know, go let the chickens out, go feed the dog. Like mm. I was just like, oh, why do I have to do this? And then you do things that are actually hard and everything else is easier. Plus all of the countless benefits that exercise gives you, just give mm. you a much more clear head, gives you goals to work towards. Mm. And then, yeah, you just realize like, shit, if I can put on 16 kilos... I can do whatever I want to do, fam. That's it, man. And that's what it is. But um, I reckon that's good. I reckon that's a good spot to leave it. So uh, obviously, we did a video the other day, NBA Dunk Contest yes. Recreation Challenge up on the TV right now. So go check that out if you haven't already. And um, go check out Tom's YouTube channel because he's going to be uploading a lot more very yeah, soon. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Tom Dunks. Hold me to it, though. Yeah, I will. Okay, good. Done. Easy. And Tom dot Dunks on Insta. Yeah. Anything you'd like to close out the podcast with, mate? Uh, feel free to fire away i'll thanks, put you on the spot here but thanks for having me thank you for like adopting me in you know like I, like you saying before the whole investing thing mm. like you're one of the first people to like see something in me almost mm. and like want to take how, it further how, that's stupid look at your quads if someone has quads like that they're, they're worth investing yeah. in <laughs> <laughs> i didn't say it <laughs> all right we'll leave it at that yeah thanks guys drizzy arms coming thick and fast very soon see you next time goodbye bye